Hey guys, Dan here from Dan and Effects. Um, yeah, sorry about the pajamas. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how to do the 360 rotary cloning effect that I uh, did in the last video. Now, for this effect, uh, this is a typical effect that would normally be uh, used with, I don't know, like um, motion control type stuff. Film where I did it ages ago where they had like a huge long track with a motion control rig and they cloned everyone. But uh, yeah, this is a, this is like the most simplified version of that, right? And you don't need any expensive equipment to do it. You can do this with an egg timer and a phone. Simple as, right? I did it with uh, a rotary display table called, I think it's a Lazy Susan with a mini tripod on it and my GH4 on top with a wide angle lens. The basis of this effect is it's the same as the cloning effect where if you had the same person sat on one side of the chair, so if I sit here now and then after a while then I would move over, you know, after I've said my bit, I would move over to here and then uh, provided I don't interfere with the line between me and that side, then you know you can do a cloning effect by simply masking around either me or the me over there, and overlaying the two. So and because we're both in the same scene with a static camera and nothing between us is being agitated, uh, it makes it you know it's a that is a bit a basic cloning effect. This effect works in the same way. First of all, you want to get all the clo get all the props and the clothes for each character you want to play and dot them where you need them to be for this uh, effect, you know, for the uh, the end video. You set up your camera on the turntable, set up all, your all the props ready, then you just hit the record on the camera, set the table to rotate, and that is, and you just leave it uh, run as you play each character. The things you have to look out for though when doing an effect like this, uh, it's not really a rule, but it's it helps avoid issues in post, right? Try and keep every character you, you are making fairly f far apart from each other. Uh, for instance, um, the two closest characters that was in my one was the director and the DOP, and for those two, even though they weren't touching, there was an issue with the DOP shadow shining on the wall right next to the director, and because we're using a wide angle lens, it kind of changed the perspective slightly, so it looked like the shadow was behind the director, and that created a few issues that I did. So I had to rotoscope around the DOP to get rid of his shadow entirely, and it still worked, but try and keep them as far apart as possible when you're first doing it, and then when you feel more confident with stuff like this, and especially if you feel more confident in rotoscoping, then you can start being a bit more technical and overlaying people, which will really sell the effect even more. But yeah, so that's the basic, uh, that's the basic setup of this, and I'm going to film a quick bit here now, and then I'm going to show you how to do it on After Effects. Hey guys, okay, so we're here in After Effects now. This is the clip that I shot in preparation, excuse that. Um, okay, um, there we go, all right. Okay, so all right, this is in 4K at the moment, so let me just scale it down to 1080. Okay, all right, <coughs> so here's our clip anyway. So as you can see, we've got the camera, it pans around, and you see we've got me there, then the camera pans around again, and then I have moved there, okay? So, and then I've got another, there's another bit then where I moved to here, and then I also moved to there. Now, this is how we're going to go about doing this anyway. So for the first bit, we're just going to leave it open, and then we're going to look for the moment where, right, so that's where he, I come in with it. This is going to be our base layer, okay? So we're going to let this pan around and we're going to keep this in until roughly where our next guy is. So 
say uh, he's going. My uh, the next guy is going to be right here. So I want to keep keep this layer going until this line here. I'm going to say has left frame because then we can put the mask for the next layer then here. But we still need this area here to represent the background for the layer that we're masking off. So see, uh, just. Yeah, so about this, okay? So we're going to do Control shift d to separate that. And now we're going to pan it around until we get back roughly... Right, here we are. Right, so I'm going to bring it back a little bit, so it's about there. Okay, and now... Let's just drag that over a little bit. And now we're going to try and sync the two now. So this is one of the key things is to turn the sound off. Uh, you've got to sync them and the way I do it is set the top layer to 50% opacity, overlay them, okay, let's bring the mouse cursor over, so, so you just page up and page down to scan through the, each frame. The cursor is running a little bit slow today. Come on. Okay, but they will do. Okay, and as you overlay them, you can see they start looking like that. So, and if we just move this over, and zoom in a little bit, so we're getting a bit more frame by frame. And this ha it helps if you have straight lines with the uh, when sinking, or at least just any kind of contrasting lines. So. You can see by here we've got the, the two arms of the chair. Right now I'm just trying to line them up. Okay. Okay, so about there. It does look slightly blurred because obviously the uh, rotating table I use, it's even though it does a full rotation in the same amount of time every time, it will it is not gonna be consistent at every point around the rotation. So it is gonna be slightly off, but for the effect that we're doing, it, it's good enough anyway. So like you, I, I'll leave a link to a more to what was probably a more reliable uh, turntable anyway, because you can get ones that are actually made for filmmaking as well, for panoramas and time lapses. But anyway, right, so that's about as close as we can get, because if we go one way, you see it's off, and the other way it's off as well. So, pardon me, that's roughly where we want to be, okay? Okay, and next, right, so for the Okay, so for the bottom layer, we've got that in, so it's in up until this point. So you can see it's right up to the edge there. Now for the top layer, we don't really want that to come in until our next character is starting to get into frame. So we're going to just track back to a point where... He is just about to come into frame, so you're right there with the elbow. So right there, and then we can just cut that off there then. And that's pretty much what you're going to do for every single character you're going to have, and then we can ramp that up. But um, I'm not going to I'm not going to do that for every single character yet. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this with it. I do it with these two, and then what I'll do is we'll do a sped up version of all the rest of them. So you can just see how the end product will look then. So, okay, so we've got these, we've got our character there, and we've got our character here. Now we've got to create a mask so that it'll allow us to see both on the same layer. Because if we just overlay them like that and go back to the 50% uh, opacity, you can see they're both there right now. So that's roughly what's going to look like. So let's ramp that back up. And then we're going to grab, a, we're just going to have a square mask for now. and. Like I said before, you wanna grab you wanna grab the mask and you wanna make sure that the right side of it, so this all this area here, you wanna make sure there's a very wide gap between the mask and the actual footage or the actual frame window, okay? And I'll explain that in a moment. But yeah, so we're gonna have that, right, so that's yeah, I'd say about roughly there will be fine, I think. Right, and what we're going to do is we're going to add, as you can see now, they're both in shot now. But if we take the mask away, 
you can see there is a slight line here and this is I don't know if I mentioned this but this is where uh, you've got to be careful with not only the positioning of your uh, two characters but also uh, be aware of the lighting as well because you'll notice right this character is casting a shadow on this armrest so if we take this one away you can see the armrest is much darker so this means that in order to make this effect work we're gonna have to do a little bit of rotoscoping so what I'm gonna do is now instead of having the mask like this we're gonna have the mask go just add a few points here and we're gonna have the mask go around the arm okay, so just, and it doesn't have to be a perfect circle you don't have to make a curve with it or anything so we're gonna be feathering this to hell so so I think roughly okay so the, the shadow doesn't really cover the whole thing so I think we can get away with quite a bit here it's mainly this area here that we where this affected the most but yeah oh yeah and also make sure the mask is nowhere near the characters as well because because of what we're about to do next. Okay, so the feathering. All right, so if we take that away, so as you can see, you know, there's a very big issue there where it's like that's where the two frames have overlapped, you know, inconsistently. Uh, to get to hide that better, all you got to do is just feather it, and you see, it adds it adds a little bit of motion blur to it, if you know, but it hides it really well. So you can see we've gone up to 140 you now we have on that mask. But hopefully, oh no, actually, wait, no, I'm skipping ahead for a minute. Uh, but as you can see, that's that's roughly what it's going to look like anyway. But um, yeah, so now we've got to actually move the mask now because right now it, the mask is just stuck at this point. And if we scan through it, if it wants to move, you can see it doesn't, it's not going to keep going. Sorry for not explaining this very well, but uh, it's been a while since I've done a tutorial like this. But anyway, right, so we want to hit uh, Mask Path. And you don't need to be full on accurate with it. The way I'm probably, the way I either do it is just grab these this, this line of uh, points. Like that. And I can't see there. Okay, and scan ahead, and then just move them over. So I think it was about. I think it was about there. <coughs> oh, yeah, and this is what I. This is what I mean by uh, when you try not to use, uh, you know, a lens that's too fish-eyed, because as you can see, we've gone from here and then as it's turned as it's turned you can see right you see this line is more or less more or less level with the door and we've come here and now it's like really it's not consistent with it M things like that they will they increase the more fish-eyed your lenses so what i typically like to do is i like to try and follow follow the line a bit of uh, things like that anyway um so you do that and once you've got the two points I'd say go back into the middle go back into the middle of the two points just to see what the mask is behaving like between them because between the two points that you've set the mask is pretty much just doing what it thinks it should be doing and right now it's not looking too bad so we're gonna go I'm gonna go right back to the end for a minute okay let's go do this again this is about there Okay, and as you can see, we're gonna have to. You want to try and keep the footage going, and you want to try and keep the other clips going until anything that the mask is affecting is out of frame. Because if you have this suddenly disappear, if you look at the door now, you can see you're gonna have that sudden jarring change, and you really don't want that because it will give away the effect. It will. So as you can see, I've extended the clip further on than we had. And we're going to keep going until this line of the door is out of shot. Okay, that's about 
right, so we're going to go there. So I'm going to go one frame back in, just so we can see the edge of the door frame. No, what are you doing? Come back. Where's the mask? There. Okay. And just come over here. And I'm going to bend that back around like that. And then go to the next frame. And then by the next frame, then you can just cut it off right there, then. Because this should be fine. And now if we just scan through. Okay, I think that's good up until this point now. So, I'm just going to quickly play that back, just that little clip there. And preview it. Hello. Okay, so that's as far as we've got so far, so you can see the mask is wandering now, so if we just play it now. Yeah, that works. Okay, so as, as you probably saw during the RAM preview, you could, it was it was very obvious that this area here was was doubling up on the layers, as if I go through it slowly. You can see it's obvious this is like a double a doubling effect, or like a... Oh, funny, or um, like, there's like a... a over exaggerated motion blur that go in there. But while it's playing in you know real time, it's not really that noticeable. See so you, you can get away with it anyway. So anyway, and now how to end how to end this bit now. So like um so like so once again go skip ahead and this is pretty much how you move on to the next the next frame pretty much. Okay, so we're gonna keep this mask going. And once again, as you can see, because because it's a wide angle lens, this mask now is deformed further over. So we're gonna bring this back in just to make sure it's not going too well. And same for the door. Okay, let's just check in between, yeah that's fine, okay and go a little bit further ahead, and the idea with this one is once once the mask, you know, once all this uh, mask that's along the door and the um, armrest has left the frame, then you can pretty much just leave the mask out there, and then that's when you continue on to the next one then, so you basically, you're basically beginning at this point then, because you can see this one doesn't have a mask because we didn't put one in there, but it's more or less at this point where the mask for this one would be, say if I put someone in this chair, you know, I'd mask it about here, and by this point the mask has left it and we're ready to move on to the next clip, which would have been this one. So it's pretty much just you know, rinse and repeat basically. So. I'm just going to speed this up now until it's done, okay? And then we shall have a look at the final product. Oh, and yeah, just before uh, I continue on, yeah, this is another thing you have to keep an eye on as well. Is the clip the first clip you use, or the one below the one you're editing, right? For the in the same reason that this cl the clip on top has to remain in shot until the mask has left the frame, or b until just before the mask enters the frame, the bottom layer has to remain in the frame as well until the mask has left the other side of the frame 
if that makes sense. Because otherwise, once the clip on the bottom has gone, if the mask hasn't left the frame yet, see you're just left with a blank space, so the, the lower layer has to remain in the shot until this until the mask top mask has left the frame. Okay, but I think by this point it would have left the frame anyway, so we can bring it back in a moment. Okay, so that's pretty much, that's one, that's one full one pretty much done now, so these, these two now could theoretically just be looped as they are. Okay, let me just deselect that. Okay, so yeah, these two right here could, these can be looped. As they are now, all you have to, do, all you'd have to do, is make sure that you sync up the end, pick an end frame for it. So, for instance, if we use the TV as a reference, so this is exactly what I did for the one man crew video. Okay, so let's say right, right there, this frame by here is going to be the end frame. So, what I would do is then. I would move, whoops, damn it, where have I gone, yeah. okay so this, right, that would be my end frame, so I'd grab the workspace and bring it in, but then for the beginning frame, not that, for the beginning frame then, right, in order to make the loop successful and actually a continuous loop, you do not want to start on the same frame. What you want to do is, right, you want to check and see, right, so this one is right there, so the next frame, the frame that you should begin the loop on should be this one, so it's where it's just overlapping, and if you don't get, if you don't get this right, Right, so right there, so that should be the beginning frame, and the reason for that is, if you have the two of the same frame at the beginning and end, you will get a slight, it looks almost like a, a bit of lag in, in the join, in the join between the two, two ends of the loop it will, so you want to have it so that it's just a continuous frame, you know, it goes from the one, it goes from the frame, basically frame one to frame two, basically. You know, the end being frame one and the beginning being frame two. So, if you can, if that makes any sense, but yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it, really. And like I said, you know, for the next clip, then you know, we'd scan over, find there it is, right? To find the next part. Uh, let's see, he would come in about roughly when the armrest comes in, so. We're gonna cut that and overlay it. Okay, so let's find the point of our clip below where the arm is in shot. So there's the arm. We're gonna set this to 50% opacity. I'm not gonna go through it all, I'm just doing this just to reiterate. Okay, and let's see where we are. Okay. Oh, too far. Let's zoom in a bit. Oh, nearly there. There. So yeah, there, and then once again you bring the opacity back up. Then on this clip then we'd add a, ma a mask. Oh yeah, we take away the old mask. At the moment, we still got the mask on because we just, it's just a duplicate. Okay, and then add a new mask. 
add, and then you do the obviously the root scope and whatever. Then we'd add feathering, so 140 again. And yeah, so that that's pretty much it, guys. So, um, yeah, let me know what you thought in the comment section below. If you have any questions regarding it, feel free to answer, uh, ask them in the comment section. I answer every question and comment I get. And yeah, you know. If there's anything, if there's any other effects that you've seen in movies or anything you'd like to see uh, done, where you'd like to see how to go about setting up the camera for it as well, provided I can figure it out, um, I'll make another video on uh, kind of like this one. So, yeah, let me know what you thought. Um, Dan uh, Daniel Sofax is also on Instagram and Facebook, so please check out the pages. Um, I'll leave uh, uh, info in the description below. I will also leave um, the I will also leave links to the turntable that I used in this video, as well as a sort of better option in the description below as well. And yeah, that's all I got. I'm Dan from Daniel Effects. I shall see you in the next video.